Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Sarah and today I have uh, two fiber arts related decks that I wanted to show off. I mentioned this in my December updates that these were both gifts for the holidays and so I wanted to do walkthroughs and share them with you. Also stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can win a copy of one of these decks. So just to give you a little backstory on why I have these decks, I've been knitting since around 2005 or six, something like that. So, um, you know, this has been a hobby of mine. Fiber arts and textiles have been an interest since then. Um, I did go through a period where I was very avidly knitting several hours a day. And while I don't knit quite as frequently um, or make quite as many projects per year as I used to, I still love doing it. Um, in fact, I just finished this hat a couple of hours ago. So um, this is from our own flock. We do have a small flock of sheep um, on our little homestead and it was exciting to be able to have this milled up locally and then work with it for the first time. So um, that's kind of my background. I do also know how to crochet. Um, I've made some ornaments um, and, and small projects from crochet. I also know a little bit about sewing which is more included in this deck here. Um, so you know it's a mix in and match kind of thing and um, and so I you know when these decks were announced or when I saw ads for them um, I was intrigued uh, how how a couple of my different interests could be uh, interwoven so to speak uh, pun intended I guess so let's start in I'm going to start with the uh, stitchers Oracle and so we'll move the yarn tarot off to one side here for a second so the stitchers Oracle comes in this box. It's black with um, white ink. It sort of looks silver but it's not reflective and then this gold color which is a little bit more um, gold in nature. It has sewing, knitting, uh, crochet related themes throughout the packaging and also on the box itself but it also has this kind of witchy aspect there's stars and moons and little skulls so I like the uh, the hint here that we're looking at sort of a practical magic um, aspect uh, it does not come with a guidebook per se it does come with this little fold-out pamphlet that gives you just some basic overview if you've never used cards for divination before and what I like about this is there are no meanings either. There's no keywords on the cards. There's no meanings in the booklet. You get to come up with your own uh, information. And it, I will say that it's available at Stitched Together Studio and I will uh, link their website below. So yeah, I'm not really into Oracle cards to a great degree. I'm trying to narrow my focus. Um, but I couldn't resist these. Um, now my husband bought two copies of the deck and it came with one of these little stickers. I believe she also sells these stickers in her shop and there's different uh, types. Um, I think each one has some kind of element or um, detail from one of the cards. These are the backs of the deck. So they're not reversible because they do have a scissors on one side and then a crochet and knitting needles on the other. Um, but I think unless you were really, you know, strongly paying attention, you probably wouldn't notice. And I love this whole, you know, moon and ball of yarn theme again here. Um, it's just, it's really cool. It's really my cup of tea. Now these cards are not um, in the order I received them. I have been playing around with them a little bit and they're not numbered uh, and they don't have keywords which I like, but that means that I don't know um, what the original order was. I didn't write it down. So we're just going to take a look at these in whatever order they are. And I don't have a ton to say about this uh, deck, so if you want to put me on, you know, slow-mo or fast-forward or whatever, that's fine. I just think that there's a lot of metaphors that you can draw. Um, and again, depending on sort of the question at hand or the issue or the spread, uh, you can make what you like out of these.
I do like this color palette. I also like that on some of the cards, she includes this kind of um, diagram. Uh, this would be like what you might see in print instructions for how to knit or crochet, like which way to wrap the yarn or where to pull your loop through. And so she includes that on a few of these cards. And it kind of can help you um, maybe come up with a come up with a story in your readings. By the way, this cardstock has a linen finish on it, so um, they do glide very well. They're a little bit slippery, but they glide nicely. Great for overhand shuffling or riffle shuffling. Oh dear. <laughs> This is the same image as the sticker. I love this one incorporates the uh, Ouija board. And this is the last card. So again, that's the Stitcher's Oracle. Um, and I really like it. But I don't have a ton to say about it because it's not a tarot deck. So I don't have, you know, traditional tarot structure to compare it with. It's just kind of its own thing. Um, and I find it intriguing. All right, so next we have the Yarn Tarot. And this is, of course, a tarot deck. Um, it is says it's for crocheters, knitters, spinners, and weavers, and this is the box. It's published by Sixth and Spring Books, and retails for US twenty four ninety five, Canadian thirty seven fifty. Illustrated students are by Katie Ponder. Um, and it says it infuses the much beloved Rider Waite tarot deck with four different yarn crafts: crocheting, knitting, spinning, and weaving. Uh, complete with a 78 tarot card deck and introductory booklet. This will, kit will delight, enlighten, and empower anyone who loves yarn. So here's the booklet that it comes with. Uh, it is a little hardbound book, which is nice. These are the backs of the cards in this sort of flat slate blue. Um, they are reversible design. And the introductory card is in orange on the opposite side, same design. And then... This is the deck itself. Um, it has that same kind of flat vectorized type of artwork. You can see in here that you have um, texture on the, 
everyone's clothing like this definitely looks like woven fabric um and yeah cool colors and interesting styles of dress that we'll see um let's look at the booklet real quick and i'll read you one entry from the booklet so let's see what it says about the fool card so keywords given are beginnings innocence and risk the Fool is about to begin an exciting adventure. Whatever troubles or rewards may come, will come. The Fool cannot be concerned with such things. While some may consider this naivete, others will see it as moving forward in faith. And then they give an upright meaning. A new stage of your life is about to begin. Now is the time to take a risk, but be sure to plan for success as best as you can. Whether it is a budding romance, a change in your career, someone soon to leave home for the first time, or some other new venture or milestone, maintain an optimistic outlook and an open mind. Commit, plan accordingly, and savor the journey. Reversed. Manage the changes in your life wisely. Taking risks or a leap of faith often results in great reward, but do not do so blindly or foolishly. Think before you speak, act with intention, weigh your options before making a decision or committing to something new. Remain open to new opportunities, but proceed with caution. Do not sabotage yourself by making rash decisions. I agree with very little of that, but that's okay. Um, that is certainly a textbook and straightforward interpretation of the full, and that's what the creator came up with. So we'll go with that one. Uh, meanwhile, let's look at this deck. Now, I am going to say something while I flip through these cards, which is the major arcana of this deck does follow the RWS very closely, and that's fine. Um, that's a creative choice. But I am kind of tired of RWS clone decks. And while I did request this, so I don't want the person who gave it to me to feel bad, just wish I, I feel like it had missed an opportunity um, in in reframing some of these you know Pamela Coleman Smith medieval style imagery um, for a more modern audience if you're gonna if you're gonna modernize it it's semi modernized like here we have you know sunglasses and a helmet and uh, lanterns and a motorcycle or a scooter and then two sheep in the cityscape um which is kind of a weird choice so and, and i do like this chariot card a lot but trying to think about well, what if all of the cards were modernized in some way and it's interesting because it's got me thinking about doing a tarot deck um with yarn um or around you know this kind of fiber arts work um but actually using more modern metaphors and more metaphors really tied in with this craft. So for example, what if the fool is someone who's, you know, reading an article in a magazine that says, oh, if you make your own clothes, uh, it'll be, it'll be, you know, a, a money saver, right? Anybody who's gone out and bought a sewing machine and fabric to make their own clothes knows it's not a money saver um, or bought a sweater's quantity worth of yarn knows that it's not a money saver but you know somebody who's just starting out might might think that um the devil is a great card you know this card uh instead of this baphomet type character which is traditional um but doesn't it doesn't resonate with a modern audience i don't think um, unless you're really into tarot already but what if this was a yarn shop sale you know or a fabric store or craft store that had you know Everything must go 50% off. Um, that would certainly be temptation. Um, you know, so I have I have ideas uh, about this. But that said, um, it is diverse. It has um, great little hints. I just noticed the sheep back here, which I hadn't noticed before. So I love that there's a dog and a wolf and then a sheep in the very background of this. And then there's like the yellow brick road or whatever it would be, but there's, it's a yarn ball. <laughs> So yeah, it, there's aspects of this that like make me chuckle, but at the same time, you know, it, it it's it's like a weird blend of arcane tarot imagery and modern uh, imagery. Now, when we get into the pip cards, the the numbered suits, 
Um, we have wands here represented by crochet hooks and you will see they are pippish. They are, they are um, only slightly seen, I would say. And they are reminiscent of the RWS, like this shows the typical sailboat on a river. Um, but what that has to do with three of wands or three crochet hooks, you know, unless you are an RWS aficionado and you already know that system, you're gonna, you might have a hard time with that. Same thing with this one. Uh, this one is more self-explanatory, the five of wands, you know, it's like maybe people who might be trying to work together, but they're sort of uncoordinated at it. Um, and I like, I like this metaphor a lot. So I like certain aspects of this, um, this deck and how they pulled in metaphors from uh, fiber arts and what the experience of creating textiles is like and the you know successes and struggles that fiber artists go through. Um, they've pulled that in and tried to line it up with the structure of tarot. I just feel like they didn't they didn't think about it hard enough um, and they didn't come up with enough clear examples. Um, like wh what is that? I don't know. Why do you have 10 crochet hooks? Nobody uses 10 crochet hooks for anything. So let's see. The metaphor sort of breaks down. Um, again, I do really like the clothing um, and the outfits uh, for our court cards, our people cards. And I think they've done, you know, a good effort here to um, be fairly diverse in their representation of the full spectrum of humanity. I don't know if everyone would necessarily identify with someone in this deck, but certainly there's you know, various types of diversity shown. So five of cups are represented by spindles, hand spindles. This is creating yarn from raw fiber. And the the pips are pretty stark. So again, if you don't know RWS, they're not giving you a lot to go on. <laughs> All the kings look very hipster in this deck. And I like this guy, he's funny. So the swords is where I started to get some more inspiration on what you could have done with this. Uh, here, for example, in the two of swords, if you had a bilateral, you know, just a front facing person and you had half of them with maybe one hem uh, and sleeve design and the other with the other sort of hem and collar design on this side and you were trying to pick like, which modification of this sweater do I want to make, you know? Um, there could have been different choices, you know. Oftentimes we get to a point in a project where it's not working well or we're confused by the directions or something and we have to put it down for a while, you know. So this could be like the timeout basket. Um, instead, it's just a skein of yarn and some knitting needles. It doesn't really give me very much. Oops, these are out of order. So that's the six. That's the seven. This is the eight. You know, the nine of swords. What about yarn chicken? Um, that's where you're working on a project, you're almost done with it, and you're about to run out of yarn, and you're not sure if you're going to be able to finish that last row or finish the bind off um, before you run out. Ten of Swords, another good example here. Um, generally in making projects, especially in knitting and crochet, you would block a piece after you have finished it. So you would uh, wet it or, or steam it or something and then lay it out with pins. So in the traditional Ten of Swords, we, see, we have a figure with ten swords in his back, and that reminds me of this blocking process, because you would normally pin out, especially something like a lace shawl. Um, 
so you know seeing seeing the missed opportunities really has gotten my my juices flowing on what I would do with this deck and who knows maybe if I come up with enough ideas I could work with an illustrator and make it happen um, but yeah otherwise I would just say you know it's a it's a decent deck if you really love the RWS or you're just starting out and you've kind of um, you know you're still working with keywords and things for the RWS imagery I think you could work with this just fine um, if you just love yarn and you know you don't have that much interest in tarot maybe just a casual sort of interest in the tarot um, this is a fun one to just you know pull out and look through um, maybe I would bring this to you know some sort of fiber arts gathering or uh, stitching group or something like that just for just for a laugh And I really do like the color palette, you know, I like the art style a lot. So there's a lot to like, um, but like I just said, the, more, the metaphors are sort of, um, they fall flat for me on a lot of these cards. I do like the, the Queen of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles both have sheep. So, so that's really cool. Um, I will also say that the card stock on this deck is very nice and the production quality is very good. So, um, yeah, so there that is. Uh, there's this also with this ending card which says open yourself, trust your intuition, and cherish the journey. Um, which is probably good for almost any situation. Let's do a shuffle test on this and I, I haven't shuffled it yet. Uh, so let's see because it's not, it is not exactly a standard card stack that I have ever used before. Oh yeah nice and flexible the edges are a little sharp but I assume that that will ease off uh, with with time that's very nice and then if you like to overhand let's see if I can do this I'm not great at it but yeah they, they slide um, they're a matte finish but they aren't sticky at all and they slide really nicely so let's see if we can do some practice readings. I'm just going to make up some questions and we'll see how it reads. All right. So uh, what is going on with my boss? She's been out of sorts lately and, you know, she hasn't been as like responsive to my emails as she usually is. What's going on with her? And I'm not going to do this reading for you. I'm just going to lay these out and then you can, you know, pause the video and make up your own uh, reading. Okay. What about that guy I met at the bar last week? Is he going to call me? Um, let's see. Uh, my friend said she wants to go on a trip next month, but I'm not sure. Um, should I go? Should I go on vacation with my friend? Let's say my family wants to go on vacation and we're trying to decide where to go. So where should we consider going on vacation? <laughs> and let's see. Uh, I'm looking for um, a job. I've been job hunting for a few months and I can't seem to get anyone to call me back. Is there, is there something I can change about my resume that would make people more likely to call me back? So yeah, the cards look really nice together. I think that, you know, the palette's super consistent. Um, clearly this is a talented illustrator that put this together. And I think, again, it could be a fun one to just pull out in place if, you know, in place of an RWS if you were going to read with an RWS anyway um, and use this instead. So, yeah, I'm going to be giving away a copy of the Yarn Tarot. Um, you can see I have this copy that has not yet been opened 
and uh, it was sent to us by mistake and so we just thought we'd give a do a giveaway uh, with you all so if you're interested in this the way to enter is to leave a comment below with a yarn emoji at the start and just tell me you know something about your crafting uh, experience or interest. Um, may, if you make things, you know, what craft do you do? Um, if you don't, which which of the four crafts represented in this deck would you be most interested in? Uh, knitting, crochet, weaving, or spinning? Um, and if you want to leave a comment or a question and you don't want to enter, just don't put in the yarn emoji. So only those comments with the yarn emoji at the start of them will be considered entries. Um, entries will close. Let me see here. I have my calendar out. Um, about a week from now. So I'm posting this video on the 9th of January, 2022. I'm going to close entries on Saturday night, the 15th. And um, we'll do a giveaway on the 16th. So again, um, just get your entries in within the next week and we'll do a giveaway. I will tag the winner, announce them in the video, um, and I uh, will email you if you have an email in your profile. If not, you'll just have to look out um, for a reply to your original comment to know that you've won. This contest is in no affiliated with no way affiliated with YouTube or the publishers of the Yarn Tarot. That's is totally a Water Child Tarot uh, Productions thing, and um, yeah, it's open to I'm going to say anyone in the world that provided I can get this deck to you. So if I can ship it from the United States, which is where I live, um, you're welcome to enter. Thanks for joining me, and tune in next time for more tarot. Take care.